There are so many reasons not to skip breakfast. So many savory, mouth-watering, tasty, delicious beyond all belief reasons. Actually, that last one was pretty convincing. Stop by for a McDonald's breakfast. Mix and match a sausage biscuit, sausage McMuffin, sausage burrito, or hash browns. Any two for just two bucks. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with combo meal. And we're back with breaking news. The new Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever. That's right, Jim. With an improved taste and zero calories, make sure... Jim. Ooh, yes. This tastes like the best Coke ever to me. We're on the air. I need to try it first. Con cero azúcar y ahora mucho más rica. ¿Será que la nueva Coca-Cola Zero Sugar es la mejor de todas? Descúbrela. The following podcast is not affiliated with the developers who have created the games being reviewed. The reviews are solely the opinions of the hosts to be used to make an educated decision on what games to download and play. Hey gamers! Are the microtransactions of life getting you down? All this buzz around cryptocurrency, but no idea what to go with. It's time that you check out the GMR Zone, a weekly podcast for all things that are GMR. What is GMR, you're asking? Well, it's the premier cryptocurrency that's made for gamers by gamers. And GMR is no ordinary token. Do you want to learn more about the unique tokenomics that feature instant rewards for holders? Plus exclusive content from the upcoming GMR Center, which will be taking the gaming world by storm soon. Then you're going to want to listen to the GMR Zone podcast. That's G as in golf, M as in Mike, R as in Romeo, Zone podcast. Be sure to search for it in your favorite podcast app and follow or subscribe. Hello, gamers, and welcome to Budget Arcade, the number one free-to-play gaming podcast in the world. I'm Scott. My name's Jeff. Hello, I'm Mark. And welcome to episode number 92. Just to recap, we played a free to, we play a free to play game every other week and then we rate and review it. Mark, what was this week's game? Hello. Uh this week's <laughs> game <laughs> the energy levels <laughs> was Pokémon Unite. Uh it's developed by Timmy Studios as well as the Pokémon Company. Now you may know these Famed studios from other games such as Call of Duty Mobile, Arena of Valor. Yes, Contra which is a MOBA. Returns. Contra Returns, which you'll hear later on in this episode. Saint Sia Awakening, Knights of the Zodiac. It is a multiplayer online battle arena MOBA. And it was released in July of. 2021 for the Switch. And it will be on mobile in uh, September of 2021. Yep, you can pre-register now. And uh, like Mark mentioned, Arena of Valor is also a MOBA. So here's the story, real quick. So Timmy is a subsidiary of Tencent. And Tencent also has Riot Games in their catalog. And for a long time, Riot Game or... Uh, Tencent was pressuring Riot Games to make a mobile MOBA, and they just wouldn't do it. They did, had no interest. So they said, okay, we'll make our own. And that game became Arena of Valor. Well, that game has mild popularity. I think it's more popular in uh, Eastern markets, but they just had that game out there. And I played it, and it's fine. But then... 
uh, you know, Riot says, okay, we're going to make Wild Rift. And we all know that Wild Rift is a game that Scott really loves and I really love. It's a great game. Uh, so now, to me, the same company, and I believe Tencent may not have published this, but I'm sure they had some hand in it. They uh, made this, Pokemon Unite, which is a MOBA. Gameplay. We've reviewed several MOBAs on this show, but if you don't know, just bare bones of a classic one, you farm these NPCs, the what they're called creeps, and then that gives you like experience and money, and you use that to level up, and you destroy towers, and you infiltrate the enemy's base. This is oh, taking- there's no money in this game, though. Right. That's what I'm getting at. The the okay. the big gameplay thing here is that while it feels like a MOBA, they've made it something completely unique. And there are creeps in the form of smaller Pokemon that you capture on the map. And then your point, though, is to there's not really towers. What's replaced with them are like these hoops that you once you catch a Pokemon you put it through the hoop, and after so many Pokemon have gone, gone through that hoop, it gets destroyed. And behind that hoop, there's like a field that slows you down when you're on the other side of the enemy's hoop. And so once you break that down, you can move a little more freely, and you continue to do that. Now, uh, you don't necessarily have to infiltrate the enemy's base and destroy a nexus like you would in League of Legends. It's really a score-based game. Whoever has the highest score at the end of 10 minutes wins. So every yeah. game is 10 minutes long. You don't have to worry about 40-minute marathons. It's my favorite. It's or, my favorite. Or hour-long marathons in like Smite. And Elliot and Mark, who would not generally fans of games that take that long, uh, 10 minutes, you can knock out a bunch of games real quick. Now, the thing about the hoops, too, is you can only hold a maximum of 30 Pokeballs at a time. I think that moves to... up, though. Like, at the beginning... Does it? I think, like, as you push... the Either as you push the goals or as you level up, you can carry more. Like, I believe you can get up to 50 as you okay. get later in the game. Um, and then you get a bonus for how many balls you deposit you'll sometimes get like a score bonus. And then on top of that, uh, the more points you have ready to score when you're under the basket, the longer it takes for you to complete that score. So if you have like one or two, you'll hold the B button or whatever, and you'll dunk it real fast. And if you have 50, you'll have to sit there for a few minute, uh, seconds while you charge up. And during that time, you can be interrupted by the enemy. Unless you have killed some of the bigger monsters on the map and then you have no wait time and it just, you automatically slam dunk it. Yeah. So there's a couple, if you've played League of Legends, there's like the Baron and the Herald and the Dragons that these objectives that you complete on the map that give you an advantage. And there's something similar here. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Robot, 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 Rotom, Rotom. If you beat Rotom, who's on the top lane, he is worth, I think, 20 points and will start driving towards the goal automatically. And during that time, you can dunk for no wait time. Then down on the bottom is Dreadnought, who gives your team a shield to make them more tanky. And in the middle is uh, Zapdos. Zapdos. Yeah. And if you defeat Zapdos, all of your buckets are like instantaneous dunk. And getting those objectives are... Uh, really powerful but i don't feel like they're super overpowered like if you have enough of a lead you don't necessarily need to worry about zapdos but if it's a close game getting zapdos is going to put you over the top uh along the way you're also leveling your characters uh you don't have to worry about farming for gold um your last hits will give you an xp bonus um which because there's no rival creeps you don't have to worry about them last hitting the Pokemon on your side. So that's going to level you up. And, and a lot of the Pokemon evolve through their three stages. So you're, um, I can't think of one right off the top. So, Char so Charmander is, is, right. a, is a, is a popular one. And 
and you you start out at the beginning stage, your stage one of this Pokemon, and then uh, as you uh, farm experience, you'll level up into the second stage, and then your final stage, which would be the Charizard. And you know th- there are more powerful Pokemon than Charizard, even though he. I, in my opinion, Charizard's one of the, the most powerful Pokemon, but um, he's available to you right off the bat. And certain Pokemon, as I guess we'll get into the paywall aspect in a minute, right. but um, you get, what is it, five Pokemon right off the bat? Um, yeah, and then, like, I don't know how long it lasts, but there's, like, a, a beginner's leveling system, and uh, and as you play the game, you're going to get some more unlocked and then there's a free rotation very much like you're used to seeing in any other MOBA. Yeah, and then you'll also earn a currency that you can buy the characters with as well. Right. And so one of the things as you're leveling in game uh, there are really I think three, is it three or four moves? There's your ultimate and then you have two yeah, moves and moves. then a passive. Um, there's three active moves that you can do. There's your auto attack. Um, and that's all there is. Uh, yeah. but and well, those, so actually, you, you get to select there's, between, there's three that you can, pl- that you can use. There's your, uh, well, within the three, there's, there's two separate ones that you can pick to use, but I believe you have to pick it before the matches start. For example, I played a lot of Ninetales, and Ninetales had a a couple frost moves, but then the Ninetales also had these other moves that you could pick as well. Um, but you had to pick those beforehand, and I believe you don't I, have to I, I pick them s- beforehand. Well, you can preset them. You okay. can preset them, yeah. But you don't as have you're playing to. The, you can, yeah. But you, yeah. Well, so if you preset them. As you're playing the game, if you get to the level where you're able to level that move up, if you don't select the alternate move, it's going to automatically give you the move that you have pre-selected after, I think, like 10 or 15 seconds. Something It's like it's not very long, but it's long enough to be able to select which move you want, and you can decide which one to go with. But yeah, you, if you leave your pre-selected, it's going to automatically pick that after the uh, time runs out on that. And uh, the Nine Tails you're speaking of is not the original Nine Tails. It's the uh, no, it's the Alolan, Alolan one. Yeah, yeah, so which is it, an Ice Mark, Nine I Tails, did not, not a take you Fire f- for a Pokemon guy. Was I mistaken? I am, po- I am a Pokemon guy. Oh, okay. I did not know that. And yeah. Charizard is not the most powerful one in this game. No, well, it's not, not in the game. But, I think he's but talking it, about overall. He's in one the of the world most of powerful. Pokemon. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. In the world I mean, of Pokemon, I think, yes. I think Mewtwo is considered the most powerful Pokemon full stop, right? I mean, in mm, Pokemon he, lore, is he like I unstoppable? Think in first generation, yes. Yeah, but some of the original. The other generations, yeah, the other generations, I think they brought out more powerful ones. Like, yeah. isn't Rayquaza even more powerful than Mew? Or Mewtwo? It depends on who you ask. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Uh, that's so the, that's it, the thing it, about It should Pokemon. be noted that this uh, game differs a lot from other MOBAs in that there's only two lanes and a jungle area as opposed to the three lanes that most MOBAs carry. Yeah, and one of the things is they still have five uh, positions, as you would say, and I might forget them. There's attacking, defending, support, Support, speedster, speedsters, and then defense. Wait, no, attack, defense, speedster, so, like your attack and, and your def- is it no, attack and defense or top lane? Or, yeah, and then support all rounder or bottom lane. And then your speedster is like your jungler if you're using your the the other game's terms. That's how they're meant to be used. So, Jeff, yeah. who, did, who did you play as mostly? When uh, you my man Greninja. I'm a Greninja okay. guy. I wanted no, to. That was, that was one of the one you were able to get. Yeah. For now, free? some knucklehead like me bought Greninja because I love Greninja, and then realized later I shouldn't have, and I should have just bought uh, Gengar, who I Gengar, also love, yeah. and uh, should have just unlocked Greninja in its own time. But oh well. Yeah, because it's one of the free ones they give you on that uh, beginner battle pass thing, a or whatever. 
yeah, I just like I played as the Pokemon I like. Uh, so right. you know, lots of Greninja mostly. Um, I did start playing as some of the. Uh, I played as Slowpoke a bit because he has really good um delay tactics, and some of his moves are really strong if you playing with good teammates. But uh, I I played with a bunch of, them, but I mostly stuck to Greninja because that's my so, dude. So we we should we should mention that this particular game is a very much simplified MOBA. It is Oh yeah. It oh, is yeah, an intro bones. it's an introductory game into this genre. I and I feel go ahead. I was just well, gonna say I, I don't I, know if I would call it bare bone. Um but certainly compared to other others in the space, it's a much more well, easy to grasp. I, I say bare bone because it's stripped down. You don't have to buy any of your upgrades you yeah. don't all you have to do is select your moves and decide which and move to up. upgrade as it goes and but i still think up. there's yeah, a lot that's... of strategy in when you attack things working as a team and things like that yes. so i think yes a lot of those more complex elements are out are gone but the strategy is still needed but sorry Mark, well, go and, ahead. and the, and the, the elemental aspects uh behind the 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 pokemon uh uh, aspect of does that play into this game? Because I was wondering about that. According to the publisher, no. Uh, if you go, I really? think it was one of the, yeah one of the directs. They said that type advantage does not matter in uh, unite. Oh, huh. so well, you shut me up. Well, um, that's from them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I I didn't know if it did or not. Like I. Honestly, I didn't feel either way whether or not I was dominating with my ice attacks against Charizard or what. Well, but anyway, so the the game is is introductory level to this genre, and I feel that because I read a couple of reviews on the game, and that was one of the big knocks on on it was that it was too simplified. It was I too think sim- that's stupid to me. I do too. Yeah, I think that's one of the best things about it. Is so my son would never play League of Legends. Right. He just doesn't care. And it's not because he doesn't like complex things, but if it doesn't appeal to him. Right. It, well, the things he likes that are complex are like building weird things in Minecraft and uh he really likes simulation type games. But this, he really just wants to pick it up, play as his favorite Pokemon, and do damage. And that's if that's your attitude going in, you're still gonna have fun. And I still, like I said before, I think there's plenty of strategy there. Now, there are things to complain about in this game when we hop over the paywall. But from a gameplay perspective, I think this game's brilliant. It, it, playing it, it feels like a MOBA. And yet, it's completely different than any MOBA you've ever played. Because if you've played Dota, and you've played League of Legends, or you've played Smite, those systems are very similar. And these are. systems are all their own. And it makes it so fresh. And just 10 minutes, you're in and out. Like, hey, I got a time for, uh, I'm on my lunch break. I can play two rounds. And I, 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 the simplicity to me is a boon because it's pick up and play fun, which MOBAs are not. Uh, right. And to get into League of Legends in order to be halfway close to not being bad anymore it takes like 40 hours and in this you just pick it up and you're having fun i i think that the simplicity is a big positive well and and that's the that's the draw to pokemon is that everybody everybody knows pokemon they they know the characters they might not know the elemental types and all this but they know the characters and that that's the draw into this game is that hey i can play this you know, uh, battle, this online battle arena m- game with some of my favorite Pokemon. Yeah. And it's, and it's not turn-based. It's, it's real time, um, battling. And so, and that, you know, before the switch, the switch titles for Pokemon, um, you know, Pokemon was very much a turn-based game. And so it's, it, this is this com- is completely uh, is a completely different realm in which 
the Pokemon company has dived into. And I think it uh, largely a success because uh, I had fun playing this game. I got to like level six for for my character, uh, which unlocked like rank matches and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, it it's just something. It's something that they can build, and they're going to continuously build on to introduce More new Pokemon. Pokemon. And that's and- something about MOBAs, right? Our characters, uh, your champions, your legends, and when you have something as vast and rich as Pokemon to pull from, it's limitless. Right. Yeah, like, right. they have so many Pokemon they could just pull. And, oh, uh-oh, it's dipping down in popularity. I know. Let's bring out a super popular Pokemon, and people can die back in. I think that taking Pokemon and putting in a MOBA is a no-brainer. And it just works. It They're ideal. The way MOBAs work is you pick a character with unique abilities, and that's part of the appeal. And Pokemon's just made for that. This is true. Yeah, and it also helps that you have a developer that has made this type of game before. We'll um, get into knows, that. Knows the strategy that, you know, needs to be on the more complex uh, level for these this genre of game. And incorporates characters that people love. And so I I would think that anybody that picks this game up for the first time would see, hey, this is fun. You know, I don't I don't know quite the the levels of hey, I I need to go to the top lane or I need to go to the bottom lane, right. but hey, hey, I'm playing with, you know, Charmander and I'm battling these these other Pokemon and I'm leveling up. So that's gonna keep me coming back. And I, I just think the the game the game is fun in its own right without being bogged down into strategy you get back you get into strategy later on in the game once you become more experienced but picking the game up from day one you don't have there's no learning curve yes yeah. it's it's just it's just dive in and have fun hey wall now there's some aspects of the gameplay that we're gonna touch on in the paywall because they are purely paywall yeah, they, like and your items and stuff. Yeah, so it, your Pokemon can hold items, and you do get some free items, but apparently they're not the good items, quote-unquote. I'm using air finger quotes. You yeah. can't see it. But, oh, I can see yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, you can see it? Are you, oh, you yeah. seeing it in your mind, Mark? No, I'm seeing it through your window, bro. You weirdo. It's okay. Keep doing your finger <laughs> quotes. Um... So this is where I want to kind of bounce back to the, the, the makers of this game. Like Mark said, and I said, they made a game called Arena of Valor, which from a gameplay perspective is a really fun MOBA on your phone. The issue in that game is paying money will give you an advantage in the game. As will this. Right. And for MOBAs, to me, that's inexcusable. And it damn near breaks the experience. Well, and it's not only that, Jeff, it, they you can't tell that your opponent has one of those powered up items either. Yeah, it just, even if it's a minor, like I never got into a match and like you said, you can't tell if they have it. And I never felt like, oh, someone's got some kind of item. And I think maybe those advantages are minimal. But even that, is enough to piss me off with a genre of MOBAs. Because every other one, barring Mobile Legends Bang Bang, which does the same garbage that Arena of Valor does, and this, like, you don't get an advantage by paying money other than for characters. Like, if it was just, hey, Gengar's overpowered, and I have to unlock him to get that. That's one thing, right? Because then everybody who has Gengar has that. But the fact that you have to... There's these things that you grind towards that you can pay to skip the grind. It it makes me angry. I, I And I'm angry because I like the game so much that this major problem is here pisses me off because it's it, other than the way the paywall works i love this game and yeah, i'd be fine was... paying for characters 
That's yeah. fine. And there's what? There's like three different currencies in this, if I remember correctly. There's like currencies to level up your items. There's currencies that level up your battle pass. There's current, and then there's your premium currency. You can buy outfits. You can buy Pokemon, and outfits would be fine. Pokemon would be fine. Just don't give an advantage to people who spend money in a competitive game. That's the problem. If this were, uh, what was that hot garbage we've played before? Any, you know, uh, dang, what was that game that was where you get a lot of hot garbage on this? Yeah. Well, one of the games where it's really just a solo experience. Diary Castle. Diary Castle. That was it. And you pay, and it's just so, and it just affects you. That's one thing. But if you're playing a game that's meant to be competitive, and MOBAs are known for having an esports scene, and the guys you watch playing the esport are going to have all the unlocks that we can't afford as plebs, that I, it just pisses me off, man. But when you watch a League of Legends match, or a Wild Rift match, or a Dota match, or a Smite match on Twitch, or competitive. Those high-caliber players have just as much at their disposal as you do. and They just have more time in the game and right, understand it. They have a higher skill level. And I'm sure that it, on a, if there is a pro Evolve scene, or whatever this is called, Unite scene, that those people are still really great at the game. If there's not one, I'm sure there's going to be one. <sighs> it just hasn't gotten there yet. I really wish they hadn't done that. It's like, yeah, but yeah. You, it's heartbreaking. But you, you, like, I understand your gripe on the competitive aspect, but you understand why they're doing it, right? For money. Yeah, but it, it yeah. ruins it for everybody else who's not competitive is yeah, what he's and, saying. And my, no, my and, point two, Mark, is I get that they're doing it for money. Here's my issue, is that all the other successful MOBAs have shown you how to do this without making giving competitive advantage to people who pay money. All yeah, of the other all ones. The, all, the, all the other MOBAs don't have the character uh, lineup that Pokemon does. That's the thing. Is yeah, that but when why you, does when that you, have to, why do you have to pay for that? Why do you have you, to pay yeah, for mean, an advantage? You can right. buy characters right. I, that, that in is, League of Legends. That's you a legit, can buy that, skins that, for That's a legitimate gripe, but what I'm saying is that when when you have the roster that Pokemon does, you can absolutely 100% what? charge for sure. uh, for characters that people love. Well, no, I don't that's, mind being charged for characters, Mark. What I'm talking, talking about, about is the, the items item that give you an advantage over your opponent because it's some super-powered item that right. Does so whatever. I don't even. The, what is the item? I, I, I don't, don't even know what. But the it's item, not even item that item one item. It's all items because the items you get can be leveled up. It, you use a currency that while you can't directly purchase it, you can purchase the battle pass, which gives you bonus amounts of that currency. And and Mark, I said if it's just the characters, I'm fine with that. It's the item system that affects the in-game experience. Yeah, I, I understand the gripe. I, I'm just saying. I, I, yeah, I, under, get away I, under, with I also it. understand from the company aspect they're saying that hey people people love Pokemon so let's let's charge some money for half of the stuff we offer right um, and th unfortunately that is that is a capitalistic uh, but I, mindset and, and my point though is is that they don't have to though because Riot has paved the way well not only Riot but all the other MOBAs like. You know, and Dota Smite 2 and Riot both do the same thing where yeah. they charge you for characters, which you can also earn, and that's all they charge you right. for. That but and there's like in um in League of Legends or something called runes. All of the runes are available to you at any time. Like before you start a match, you can create builds and you don't have to pay for them. So when you pick your character, let's say you buy Gengar. And you have as much advantage as anybody else with Gengar. Whereas not if they have these items, right? But in League of Legends, if you buy, um, you know, Zinzao, 
you have just the same advantages as anybody else. It just like I get what you're saying, Mark. And yes, they can get away with it. It's Pokemon. People are going to buy it. People are going to play it. It's going to be successful. But that doesn't discount the fact that there are MOBAs out there that don't do this and are successful. Riot's one of the biggest companies. The biggest esport in the world is League of Legends, you know, and and part of that is the competitive integrity of the game. No, I, right, I, no, I understand that. I just, I, I think we would be naive to say, hey, we we don't, we don't un, not under not understand, but we don't see why the these companies have to do this for this game. It's it's why would they'd that almost be naive? Be ne- but how they would, are they we naive? Would, we they, we've played enough of these games and witnessed they would be how negligent other games work. not to do it. That's the thing is they would be negligent not to do it. They'd be leaving what? money. They would be yeah. leaving okay. money. Yes, so they'd be much leaving money. money on the table, Mark. Yeah. But do you work for EA? Is that what's no. happening right now? Because yes, they'd be leaving money on the table. But here's the thing: I've spent real money. On League of Legends. I bought character packs and skins and all this other stuff because I really love the game. You know how much money I've spent on Pokemon Unite? Zero dollars. And I don't come back to the game. And this is, I'm not trying to spoil the seal, but I don't come back to this game because of that competitive issue. Because for this genre, it shouldn't be there. And when Halo comes out, and they do, or like Splitgate we did two weeks ago. If you, I love Splitgate. I think that's a great game. But if you could pay money to have a competitive advantage, no matter how fun that gameplay is, I'm not coming back because there are better games out there that already do it better. But this game wasn't for you, Jeff. Okay, that's the thing. That's irrelevant. This game wasn't for you. It was for me. I really no, like the game. It's a it, MOBA, Mark. It, it it appealed to your nostalgic. No, you're telling uh, me how no. I feel about the game, <laughs> right? But it appealed to your nostalgia, so you were drawn to the game is because it was Pokemon. You love Pokemon, or you no, might. You, I, don't I, love know, I don't know if you love Pokemon, but you know no. these characters, so you you allowed yourself to be brought into the game. But that's what does what, that that's have to what, do with the pricing? Of pr- I understand that, and and I I understand that you guys don't like the praying aspect of of but essentially the reasoning taking money. Why you're totally fine with it is because they'd be dumb not to. Fair enough, they're right. going to get their the, money. But what yeah. I'm saying to you is they're not getting enough of my money, and instead it's going to go towards Wild Rift or. League of Legends, because they care about the competitive, excuse me, I'm getting choked up, I'm so emotional, about the competitive nature of the game. And, and that's I don't this, think this game, that this they're game leaving is not that much money the off the table by that's just doing thing. skins and doing everything else Legal, that League of Legends everybody is else for the done. competitive MOBA players. Pokemon Unite is not for those gamers. I think that's where y'all are getting it. No, y- y'all are getting it blended. Is that these these those two? It's games still a competitive are, are, online game, Mark. Th- there is com- there's competitive atmosphere. Atmosphere. But that's, You're that's playing not against what another team on. trying to score more points than them. But that's not what it's built on. It's oh, built that's on the the the, the, game. the, the, ca- the characters Mark, in the in the game. the game. Is. No, no. Anybody playing this game doesn't care that it's a MOBA. They're caring that they're playing as Charizard. No, they okay? can play as Charizard in anything else. No, they can't. They, they can't, can't play as Charizard so in League of Pokemon Legends. Games. We no, Pokemon they can't. Masters on this very podcast. Nobody played that game, by the way. So your point is, is that Pokemon don't necessarily bring all the boys to the yard because nobody played Pokemon Master, but they played this maybe because it's a MOBA, which is an insanely popular genre. And when you take MOBA and you blend it with Pokemon, it's a winning combination. We both yeah, agree. Gr- but the yes. issue is, is that MOBAs. Okay. Let's make a basketball game, Mark. And they already make this game. It's called 2K, where you can pay to get advantages, right? You can pay to be better than your opponent. Not better because you've practiced and played a bunch, 
but because you're richer. Yes, that is correct. And the fact However, that this game is not for me, which, how dare you? You don't know what's for me and what's not. But the fact that it's a casual experience is first not true. It is a much more casual version of a MOBA, but it's still competitive. And there are competitive Pokemon scenes and for the core game. So I disagree with that sentiment that it's not for me because it is a MOBA. And that's the are, thing. Are more people going to get into this or League of Legends right off the get? If both, I, if no both games were placed in front yes, of them, if the, both games were placed the, in front the of the them, fact, which game are people going to choose? They're going to choose Pokemon. No. Okay. We both agree that Pokemon is more popular than League of Legends and people are going to play this game because it's Pokemon. But yes. justify to me why that is okay to make your game competitively. I never said it was slanted. okay. I just okay, said I just said they'd be leaving about? money money on the table, and you were getting upset. Yes, they're leaving money on the table, but you're using that as a way of defending the action. And I'm telling I'm you, I'm just saying it's smart that it's business. It's indefensible. Practice. It's smart business practice. Okay, it's smart business practice. Yes, but it. Ruins- I didn't say I was okay with it. I'm not going to spend money on this game. Okay, but I don't actually agree that it is smart business practice because that's one of the things that all the people were talking about when this game came out. The negative press it got was about the pay-to-win aspects in a game that is a MOBA, in a genre where the established games have already shown you you don't need to have pay-to-win. But once again, I, I think you're talking about two different genres of players. You, you're talking no, about the ones, the ones that want to play a MOBA, and you're talking about the ones that are appealed by, by Pokemon. And the ones that are appealed by bo- they Pokemon are, are outnum- outnum- they outnumber the MOBA players. So even if the MOBA players are turned off, you still got this faction of, of Nintendo fans that love Pokemon, and they're going to play this game because they want to play their favorite But you just said that people Pokemon. didn't play Pokemon Masters. So that's well, not that's true. true. Just that because... True. Po- uh, no, I'm saying it's true nobody played Pokemon Masters, but what I'm saying is that also argues that Pokemon don't doesn't necessarily mean it's going to bring all of these, uh, you know, casuals to the game. And the longevity of the game, as we've seen with other MOBAs, is a competitive scene. And when you have pay-to-win aspects, you ruin that competitive scene. And it's yeah, a genre gonna, where that's been you're established. You're going to deter your non-competitive players when they're getting destroyed by people who've got these, you know, super-powered items that the other people don't have. I don't think they should have it in there, and I don't think it's necessarily going to make them more money. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm fine being that, the villain in this podcast. I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to make you the villain, but I am, you are I'm, incorrect I'm, on I'm this. I'm buying into the villain. I, I love right. it. But Bring anyway, it. I'm done. We're not going to agree. Replayability. This game is pretty replayable. It is really fun. Mark agrees. It's really fun to play. And the 10 minute sessions make it all the more replayable because when you finish a match, I think I've said this about another game, uh, Storybook Brawl, you finish a match, you're like, I got time for one more. And before you know it, you play 20 matches. And then you've got all your, your Pokemon to unlock and grind for, and every Pokemon feels different. There's other positions to learn, and you can team with your friends really easily. Um, sort of. You still have to get over the Nintendo friend code hurdle, but once you do that... You, no, you don't good. even need a friend code hurdle. There's If you start a party, all they need is the code for that party at the given time. You're right. That's right. Um, that's really great. So... Yeah, I actually played with a streamer who was playing the game, yeah. and she had like two other people with her, and I was like jumped in on the friend co- or the code that she had up on her screen, and I was just like, "Okay, let's roll." It wasn't that bad at all. It was actually probably one of the more convenient times yeah, that I, I played so. online with people on the Switch. Yeah, I agree with that. And one thing is, Nintendo's not known for online, and relatively speaking, I didn't run into a lot of like latency and stuff like that occasionally i did but nothing game breaking 
Yeah, I don't think I have ran into any latency whatsoever. The only hit to the replayability is what I just got done talking about. I don't like the competitive advantage you get with paying, and that keeps me from wanting to play the game more. Yeah. So let me let me ask you guys this. So does this game propel Nintendo to I, I mean we have to you'd have to see how how well the game does actually, you know, in the online atmosphere, but does this does this give Nintendo more uh I guess ammunition to offer better online experiences because no. I don't think they no, care because they, they started charging for it and it's still as buggy and gross as it's ever been when it was free. So I'd rather they just not charge for online than if it's not going to be good. So I, I didn't realize that they started for charging for online. Oh, they, not for free to play, but for uh, if you want to play Smash online, you have to have Nintendo online. Oh, OK. Well, and Smash online is just terrible. Yeah, that, it's that is real super bad. Buggy. And that game is their most popular competitive game. Uh, there's a big competitive scene around um, Smash, but they don't seem to care about online, and I don't think that's going to change. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so either. Now, let me. So at the end let, of wait, hold on. Let me ask you guys this: What do you know? And I don't know if it's been announced or not. If the mobile version crosses over with the Switch version, yes, or, it does. Okay, cool. That's good. It will have cross-play, 100%. And especially with that code system that Scott was talking about for joining lobbies, uh, I think that's so great. I hope more people adopt that code thing. It just makes it so easy. Well, I think this this game is also running off separate servers from Nintendo. I think yeah, it's the Timmy servers we, Let's this. not get confused. Okay, Nintendo did not make this game. Right. They published it. and And I would argue... With no I proof think they whatsoever, just gave Timmy the rights to use the Pokemon name. That might well because the Pokemon company isn't solely owned by Nintendo, but oh, there's okay. a whole lot of stuff going on there that I don't understand. But I think that if the game were made by Game Freak or Nintendo's in-house studios, we would not see the issues with the competitive microtransactions. Uh, that's something that Nintendo has done really good about the way they've monetized their games. Uh, when they choose to monetize them, seems to be pretty fair. Um, so I would think that maybe they wouldn't do that. I have no proof. I'm speculating, as Mark would probably say. But given their track record, I don't think they necessarily would. But it's easy to see that if if this game does as well as I, I would assume Nintendo is anticipating, that they would be more involved in maybe future decisions that are made with uh as it as it revolves around evolving the game and and whatnot. But um I think I think the game as it as it stands by itself is is pleasantly replayable. And uh I agree with everything that you all have said. <laughs> judgment all right at the end of each episode we vote on whether the game deserves our seal or not and requires a two-third vote to be approved or denied mark what do you say uh yeah it gets my seal um i'm not a i'm not a moba player and so this game being as simplistic as it is uh really appealed to me and allowed me while recognizing the character's that I was playing as also allowed me uh, a more simplified game to learn the, the, the MOBA genre. And so um, I, I, I don't think, I don't think anybody could go wrong playing this game, whether you're a MOBA fan or not. Um, I just think that, you know, aside from some of the, the, the paywall transactions, this is a great game. Right, this uh, game is very polished. Uh, as far as MOBAs go, it's I I, I liked it. I just the, didn't feel as MOBA-ish as I would have liked. Other than that, but I mean, it plays very nicely. It did, however, it, it made me realize that uh, Wild Rift could easily be 
brought to the Nintendo Switch and would work perfectly so the, for it. So the plans are that Wild Rift will have a console debut at some point. Yeah. I don't know when, but you're right. It, it did give me that confidence that it will translate well uh, to a controller player. Yeah, because I mean, like they use the D-pad in this game for upgrading your moves, and if you press to the left or the right, you know, would pick which move you wanted to do on the D-pad for your upgrades when it got to that point. So it's kind of like you know, all you got to do for Wild Rift is you got the four different moves. Whichever D-pad direction you push would upgrade that specific move, and that would work absolutely perfectly for it. So this this game actually made me feel that oh, there's there's more out there that could be done for other MOBAs in this, you know, for this genre for the Nintendo Switch, and that would be awesome. But yeah, this game, it, it gets my seal. Um, I, again, don't care for the pay-to-win aspect, and I did feel it. I know you said you guys didn't feel it, but I went on a game where I was playing as Gengar. The enemy team had a Gengar as well, and he just completely wrecked me over and over again, even though we were the same level. And I don't feel that it was because that person was a better player. I felt that he had some sort of advantage over me because it was like we would hit each other with the same moves, but he would take more damage off of me than I could take off of him. But it it is going to get my seal. Jeff, how about yourself? Uh, So from a gameplay perspective, it's pretty dang awesome. Uh, I really like the game. And despite what was said, I do feel like it was for me. I love MOBAs. And I the when I heard a Pokemon MOBA was coming, I'm like, oh, baby, that's peanut butter and jelly. It just made for each other. And it works as great as you would think. I love that it's unique. It doesn't feel like any other MOBA. Um, the There is a dark cloud with the microtransactions that I've said that how I feel about it. And I wish it wasn't there. That being said... When I play with my son and he's having a good time, I'm having a good time and we team up together and I'll play support, I'll play slow poke and I'll stop someone in their tracks and he'll be Charizard, his favorite Pokemon, and blow them to bits. It's still really fun. Um, I just think that the the paywall leaves a bitter taste in my mouth, but not enough to not recommend the game and say, this is a great game and it gets my seal. Does this so have Pokemon hold Unite on. is budget arcade approved? Does this have the the bones to be the best MOBA in no. the in the genre? Um no. so for me, it would need to Okay. It's clearly not trying to your point, Mark, compete with League of Legends. It really doesn't care. And hardcore League of Legends players are not going to uh, flock to this game in any sort of numbers. And I think in order for it to be the best, there has to be that complexity. I think this is a gateway drug. I think this will this will get you kind of getting the idea of how a MOBA works. And uh, But I think you're going to hit a ceiling at some point where you're like, okay, I need something with a little more depth. And you'll move on to a Dota or a League of Legends. Um, but actually, I would push people who play this game and want something more. I would push them to Wild Rift. I think it is um, less complex than the League of Legends proper, more complex than this. So it's a nice middle ground. So I wouldn't I don't even think it's better than Wild Rift. We do have one commentary, Mr. Nomek, Namek, in the commentary channel, obviously. Why would he put it there? Um, Namek says, so Pokemon Unite didn't unite my desire to catch them all with the need to hash it all out in a family-friendly MOBA. I've gotten flack for my easy, easily given seals in the past, looking at you, Valorant, so I'm going to refuse this one seal. It's not, be, it's, not, ugh, it's not an awful game, and I think I enjoy it more than Splitgate. However, it's a victim of its own simplicity. Sometimes simple makes for an easily learned game, but it doesn't make the best tactical or strategic one. Compared to other MOBAs in the genre, most free to play, this game reduces strategy by removing a lane, removing an item store, and removing towers in exchange for Pokemon ball hoops or Pokeball hoops. That mixed with the limited characters makes a makes for a boring match. Most times, you face the same enemy player characters, thus reducing the excitement 
found when meeting a new uh, meeting new lineups to face. Also, I found the controls decent, but I really just like the abilities auto target the closest unit near you. So if you're going to so if you're going about to kill an enemy player running away, but a random mob got aggroed. I don't know if I'm reading that right. Your ability would target whatever is closer. I found this to be a burden when trying to target players. So to recap, won't get my seal. I think down to the line. Uh, I think down the line, when more playable characters come along, it may be worth a revisit. But it's just too simple to really warrant long-term enjoyment. Although, final note, I did get told to uninstall and get good scrub, like my friend did during League of Legends. So the community might also. I didn't. Didn't get told. Uh, get good scrub. So the compu- uh, community might be more friendly but not enough to make it a better choice uh, than alternatives. I'll tell you why you didn't get called that, Nomic. There's no game chat. Um, yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, there's no way. That's one thing that Nintendo does. And one thing that if you're wanting to get your kids into MOBAs, this is the way to go because there is no toxicity because there's no chat. They're, they can spam emotes or whatever, and they I've seen that. Um, but that's why you don't see toxicity. But you should probably get good. Scrub. And and people are saying there's a lack of strategy. I disagree with that. Uh, I think that if you still play as a team and you communicate what you can't do in this game, uh, <laughs> which, you know, could be part of the argument, that there is still complexity to be had. And um, there are smart moves to make and poor moves to make. <laughs> and if you have one guy on your team making a bunch of poor moves, you're going to lose. So that's very MOBA-y. But you you do also have the ability in the lobby before the match to share these scripted prompts of where you're going to go, I'll take the top lane. Yeah, which is nice. You know. But that's so, not a chat. No, it's not All a chat, is, is but, a you, but you, you thing. still, but, the, but that's, 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 this game's, saying, Scott. <laughs> that's this game's version of communication yeah. before the match. You starts. can, um, in game, you can ping for help. You yeah, can, but you can't flame anybody and go but, get grit. Yes, good, but good, we're good, talking yeah. about what you can do. Listen, man, I used all my energy yelling at Mark. Now I gotta yell at you. Do it. About time. I yell at Scott all the time. No, you don't. Okay, next game we're gonna Not be playing is Contra you. Returns. Listen. I yell because I love. <laughs> what are we playing, Scott? You, Contra Contra Returns. Is it a MOBA? On mobile. No, I don't think it's a MOBA. No. I don't know what it is. It's yet. a Contra style game, but we'll see. No, yeah. That there Contra's only worse, returning. There's only worse games out there. Uh toilet time. Well, what did you think about Pokemon Unite? You can get us on our socials, uh Facebook.com slash budget arcade. Uh Twitter and Instagram, we are at budget arcade. If you want to check us out on twitch.tv or TikTok, that's at budget arcade podcast. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at our Patreon, patreon.com slash budget arcade. Um, for supporting us, you'll get access to our exclusive Patreon channel in our Discord. You can join our Discord from any of our show notes as well as our socials. Our music is provided by Stimage, and you can download his music at metroidmetal.com. And uh, Mark's OnlyFans will no longer be featuring nudity, so... Yes, I read that. Oh, hey, listen, listen. We're pivoting into a new platform. Stay uh, th- tuned. Hey, you someone's can, opening hey, a new platform. If st- I were an investor, I would find out who the next best place is hey, and put my I'm gonna, money. I'm going to tell you where you can find my announcement for my next platform. It's at the podcast Draft Movie House. Uh, uh, you, you can find it anywhere. Imagineville Podcast Network. Where you get your podcast for. Uh, appreciate okay, you on. Uh, support.
Welcome to Everything Outdoors. Can I help you find anything? Hey, yeah. Can you point us to the camping gear? Sure, aisle two. Snowboarding? Just bought a new Nissan Pathfinder. It's got intelligent 4x4, and we want to hit the backcountry. Aisle 18. And the boats? Are you sure you can do all this? Up to 6,000 pounds towing, we're good to go. Oh, where's the scuba gear? Return to rugged in the all-new 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. Available intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Towing capability varies by configuration. See Nissan Owner's Manual for proper use.